to welcome everybody. I'm Teresa McCoy, your lovely president for the year, until June anyway. We'll find my mentor. And uh, how's, how's everybody with the new year? Did you have a good new year? Yeah? So, my new year's resolution is to help all my friends gain 10 pounds so I look better. <laughs> I look better. <laughs> all right. Um, what we're going to do is introduce, oh, nope, before we do all of that, rewind, rewind. We are going to stand and say the pledge to the flag. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So the last meeting, I, I thought it was quite uh, coincidental that uh, two of our speakers had the same speech topic. Come on in. What, what is this room? <laughs> this For is Toastmasters. Toast oh, this is Toastmasters. Okay. Yes, and we are just starting. So okay, well, wait, just for a time, maybe next time, just look her <laughs> Okay, Thank enjoy. You. And today's uh, theme for our meeting for the new year is it's 2018, a new year and a new you. Time to renew, re-energize, and reinvent. And coincidentally, I already had my speech title when the Toastmaster came up with the theme for the day. So it's kind of nice to see that our, our leadership seems to be on the same wavelength. Uh, so that brings us to our Toastmaster of the day, Miss Crystal. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Welcome to Hammer Mill Toastmasters Club. My name is Crystal McCain, and I will be your Toastmaster of the day. Um, before we get started, I just want to let you know, especially if you're newer with Toastmasters, how we work. Our meeting is actually divided into three parts. The first part involves prepared speeches, and tonight we have two prepared speeches. Uh, the second part is table topics, and this is a chance where you'll get to learn how to think on your feet and organize your thoughts in a fun environment. The final segment is evaluations, and here we'll find out what we did well and what we can do to improve. Let's see, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick roll call of everyone we have. Uh, Speaker number one is Teresa McCoy. She's here. Uh, speaker number two, Bob Wilson, in the back. And uh, let's see, our general evaluator tonight is also Bob Wilson. Very good. Uh, our speech evaluator, we'll call him a super speech evaluator, is Bob Wilbur. Okay. And our grammarian hot counter, John Legazia. And I think that's everyone. Okay, great. Oh, timer. Yes, timer is Kyle. Thank you for helping us out tonight, Kyle. Thank you so much. And um, I'd like to take a moment just to welcome our guests here. So if you're here for the first time or guests of Toastmasters, you want to stand up and just tell us what brought you here. <clears throat> Give us your name and tell us why you're here. I'm Zachary Lewis, and I'm here to uh, yeah, become a new you and to be a better communicator. Okay, great. Excellent. Welcome. Did you sign up on Meetup or? Meetup.com. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, I think I saw you there. So great. Glad to have you. Yes, today we're going to talk about our kind of new year, new you, getting ready for 2018. Um, we all know the typical New Year's resolutions, lose weight, save money, get a new job. But we're just going to put all that stuff aside for just a moment, because they're good things, but we're just going to put them aside for now. And what if we could do something a little bit different for this new year? What if we could just make a better year every day, no matter what we do, by creating uh, wonderful moments in life? just amazing moments in life for everything we do. 
Um, just enjoying the little moments, having great conversations with friends, uh, having some a few laughs with the guys instead of rushing by, maybe even just having a conversation with that difficult coworker at work, just spending some time chatting that person up. So just we could focus on creating uh, more amazing moments, and I think we'll all have a better 2018. We have a word of the day today, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce that um, before we get into our speaking program. Our word of the day today is fastidious, and the definition of fastidious is possessing or displaying meticulous attention to detail, especially scrupulous or sensitive, especially in matters of taste. Some examples of fastidious are he is fastidious about keeping the house clean. And my mother has always been the most fastidious and organized of people. So what we do here in Toastmasters, we try to incorporate the word of the day into our speeches or any time we speak. Um, if you do, if you could show support for that person by just giving one knock, um, and then they'll know that we heard them and we're giving them support. So we're going to move into our prepared speaking program. Our first speaker is Teresa McCoy, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Teresa. Um, and we're also going to hear her objectives. And why don't we go? Um, Bob, would you like to tell us uh, her object objectives, her speech objectives? Sure. Do that first. Uh, Teresa is giving speech number five tonight. Your body speaks. The objectives are use stance, movement, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact to express your message and achieve your speech's purpose. Make your body language smooth and natural, five to seven minutes. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob. A little bit about Teresa. For decades, Teresa McCoy struggled with health issues that affected her quality of life, including her ability to work. As a single mother raising three boys, twins plus one, her primary focus was on improving her quality of life so she could make sustainable income. On her journey to finding a part-time job, after 15 years of not working, she discovered C&M and Toastmasters. She achieved the goal of wellness to a level that has allowed her to start her own coaching business and join Toastmasters to develop her speaking skills. Therese McCoy is also our club president. Um, so please help me welcome Therese. Madam Toastmaster, distinguished members, guests, Happy New Year. How many have stated a New Year's resolution? How many are still on track? Okay. There we go. How many know the number of people that actually the percentage of people that actually make a resolution and attain it. Anybody want to take a guess? John? Two percent. Ten percent. Anybody else? Forty-six. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we, if we average them together, we might still not get it. it. This table was close. Average the two, it's actually eight percent. Eight percent of the people who make a resolution actually attain it. The rest of my talk is going to be focused more on goal setting because that's the primary step to your resolution. What in your life needs to change for you to achieve the life you dream of? It could be that you need to create a new habit or maybe you need to eliminate a habit that is no longer serving you or you're trying to find a solution to a situation. It all requires fastidious action, not just the desire to make it happen. Think about the person that has overcome an addiction or the person who has released 100 pounds or gone from broke to building an empire. What made them successful? 
your mindset, setting goals, developing an action plan, and consistently implementing the action plan. Mindset is very important because it keeps us going forward in a positive direction and keeping our motivation. Did you know the Toastmasters Pathways program has a path specifically focused on motivational strategies? 83% of the people have no goals. 14% of the people have goals in their head, but not written down. And they are 10% more, or 10 times more successful than the people with no goals. Then you have 3%. The 3% actually have their goals written down, and they generally are three times more successful than the 14%, and 30 times more successful than those with no goals. 50% of those with the written down goals do attain their goals. They also state that they read their goals frequently, if not daily. Conclusion, reading your goals, writing them down, and reading them daily is going to give you the highest chance to achieve them. And a goal without a plan is just a wish. Successful goals, they're SMART, uh, specific. SMART is the acronym. They're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic. This graphic actually says relevant. And they're timed. Becoming a better person is a very vague goal. That's not going to work. You need to have fastidious detail. Know what areas you're going to improve in. Personal, spiritual, financial. And when you're goal writing your goal statement, you want to answer these questions. What do I not like about my speaking ability right now? How is it affecting my current life? What will my future look like if I don't change anything? What will my future look like when I become a competent communicator? When would I like to achieve this? What are the obstacles to achieving this? And what am I willing to change to make this happen? How many would like to improve their financial situation this year? Maybe you're in a situation where you actually need a job. Maybe you're in a situation where you need to change jobs. Here's some sobering statistics. The graphic is slightly out of date, just by a couple months. Our current unemployment rate is 4.4%. The DC unemployment rate is 7%. That means it's a tough market out there. So what are you going to do to make yourself stand out to employers. Well, you actually have access to an opportunity that is going to help you develop skills that are not, I'm going to say, they're not informational skills. They're not skills that pertain specifically to whatever your line of business is. If you're a computer programmer, you know, you've got programming skills. You need other skills on top of that. And what is it that you have access to? Postmasters. Here are the skills that employers are looking for. And the Toastmasters program covers all of these skills, gives you consistent, practical information and opportunities in order to develop these skills. It also demonstrates to employers, if you're looking for a job, that you're not sitting at home doing nothing. You initially had a reason for joining Humor Mill or attending as a guest. So what is that reason? Do you have them written down? Do you have an action plan with a deadline 
if you need assistance developing that, come to any of us officers and we will help you organize yourself. In review, what increases a person's chance of success? Mindset, smart goals written down and read daily, and taking action. So everybody, get writing. That'll just faster. Thank you so much, Teresa. And we're actually going to kind of continue on that line of uh, Toastmasters and you know, how it can benefit us in the coming year, 2018. Uh, Bob Wilbur is next up. And uh, Bob Wil, wait a minute, yes, <laughs> I got the names mixed up, I'm sorry. Bob Wilson is next. <laughs> we have Bob Wilson, we have Bob Wilbur, and I'm like completely confused. Bob Wilbur, if you wouldn't mind reading his objectives, please. Let me just check with Bob Wilson. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Bob Wilson, uh, is it okay if I fill right on this? Absolutely. And uh, please. The objectives of your speech. They're right there. You've got your right hand on it. The fingers. Okay. Let me walk over here. A double dose tonight. Just need to hear about oh, just read. Okay. You can cut all or some. Yes. <laughs> and he's going to talk about uh, evaluation, which is a Oh, okay. Okay, so Bob Wilson is going to be speaking on uh, evaluate to motivate, is his topic. There's several different criteria, it looks like about 10. How effectors was the speaker's introduction? Was the presenter adequately prepared? How did the speaker use vocal variety? Very interested to, to see that with Bob. He's very good at that. What other techniques did the speaker use to personalize the presentation? Did the speaker display the visual the visuals smoothly and appropriately? What aspect of the speaker's presentation style did you like? Did the speaker present the material clearly and simply? What could the speaker have done differently? And what did you like about the presentation? So with that, I'm yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. A little bit about Bob's speech for tonight. Um, there is more to a speech than speaking. There is more to a speech than being told what you did. There is more to evaluating than what we think. Positive feedback is important, but do we deliver constructive feedback? Let us look at this together as our Vice President of Education shares how to evaluate and be better at it. So please help me welcome Bob Wilson. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, our job at Toastmasters is, has many parts. We could seek many fold, but we need not be fastidious. Or maybe we should. Because we are learning about enhancing and improving your public speaking skills. We're learning about how to be more effective in leadership. We're learning how to do these things by the roles we do, guiding and helping others. One can only go so far without bringing others up. That's another realm of leadership. But how do you do so when they need to be told something about what they say or do? We can say positive feedback. Oh, Madam Toastmaster Crystal, that green looks great on you. And she's saying, thank you, but how does that help me be a better speaker? That's a very good question. And we'll focus a little bit on that as well. How do we be better at what we do? We could say, hey, your hair looks great. Again, nice, but doesn't help you be a good, better speaker. But then again, if the hair distracts from your presentation, do you think we need to know that? Yeah, is it easy? 
So we look at these things, and they like to help me, want me to use visuals. Well, this is the first time in a month that this has worked, so I don't prepare for it. My first public speaking experiences did not include PowerPoint. Didn't exist. Internet. A what? We had slides, okay, little 35 millimeter slides that you projected across the room and you can make them real big or small or just move the projector. I've done that before. So that's why you have some notes and these little handouts sitting on the table. You can refer to these things. It starts here with the one that has four and ends with the one that has three. So, we want to have good feedback, and we're going to look at methods of improving, and good feedback will also help with something critical that Toastmasters does. It builds self-esteem, confidence. You can do it. Well, yes, you can, but you really want to. Are you scared? We'll overcome the fear through these things. I direct an ESL program. I teach the skills. My teachers work on the skill building. The confidence comes with understanding the skills. But where do you go from there? Toastmasters! And that's where we're going now to build self-esteem as well. They talk about the tell and sell approach. I would look that one up. Tell and sell. It's a method of presenting the information and the strength and the weight of it carries. You don't have to do much. Vocal variety really does help. But tell and sell is where you just, you got two or three minutes. Get it out there. Don't be cruel. Don't be mean. Be on target. You want to build the person up. And there's a way of telling somebody they made a mistake without letting them feel bad. Although it's a little hard to say, you know, that red, and blue, and green hair really did distract from your speech. Uh, I don't think you needed to have it out to here next time. Please don't do that. We have to say that to somebody, don't we? Yeah. When you evaluate, maybe you want to meet before to talk about things. Have we done that lately? No. Should we? Well, yes, it couldn't hurt. And a good evaluation shows that you are interested. And then, maybe you want to put yourself in the position of the one doing the speaking. I've seen an icebreaker where the person is, uh, well, I, uh, well, like I went over here and well, we, we, we talked about uh, what we did at the summer camp, but I forgot about that because the summer camp was 20 years before I told the story, which is 20 years. I had already met. They're nervous, aren't they? So we want to encourage them and say, hey, you did okay. We got the story. We got the sense of it. I think you know where you made some mistakes. You know what? We're not going to dwell on it too much. Ask me a specific question. We want to build them up. I stress that because we do. We don't want to use those words like, you didn't talk about that with clear, good grammar. That's not the time for that. You should have instead worn pink today. I don't know. You failed to do this. Oh, golly, that's a great way to it. You may find someone who is fastidious. And they know they made a mistake. Is it our job to tell them again and kind of rub it in? No. Is it our job to make sure that they can be better? Yes. Can we do that carefully, firmly, supporting? The one who takes a 10-minute speech and at the end of five minutes they're done. They obviously didn't meet one of the goals, did they, of going for it and stressing it and developing their subject a little better. But how do you tell them? I wouldn't do it in public, but I make sure they did know. 
That's the job of the mentor, which some of you are almost qualified for now. You want to use more uplifting words. I believe. Oh yes, I believe that John will look good in pink tomorrow. He's saying, I don't know about that. That's a normal reaction. I look good in pink. Well, real men can wear pink. Don't go far with that one, okay? But does it help? In the speech evaluation, maybe not the pink, but certainly the attitude. They say, you look good, or you did good. This was awesome. Like I said, most people, they're aware of their mistakes. Now, we could say, I suggest we could do a little better here or there. Crystal likes me to smile. It's a little hard to do that when you want to be serious. But if you start smiling too hard when you're doing a humorous speech, I watch somebody start laughing at their own story, and they lost it because I think they're smiling a little too much. There's a word. It starts with a B. Does anyone know what it is? B A. Balance. You'll find it. I suggest my reaction because you're personalizing it. What I saw, what I heard, what I felt. We're not going to say, you did this. You did that. By the way, that's a great way to destroy a marriage. I feel when this happens. I believe when this happens. I felt those, you own the feeling and you bring it back out differently. It's not an attack, it's somehow that didn't strike me right. Oh, I didn't get it. Can you explain it to me some more? A whole lot better than, hey Joe, what are you talking about? Again, we're pretty uplifting and positive. And here's a critical one. We want to focus on the person. The person. No, we're focusing on the presentation. I heard an awesome speech, and we've all heard a great speech on the radio. And then we meet the person and going, that nice voice, that presentation came from that funny looking face. We're not supposed to say that. We don't. It's in here. We know it is. It stays there. We want to focus on actions, not the person. Also a great way to destroy a marriage or a friendship. You know, when you did that, you really hurt. You, 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 that's a person focused. You know, those, those ugly words make me feel uncomfortable. Boom. We want to lift the person up through self-esteem building things such as, again, they did this right, they did that right. A good evaluation is going to bring out a shortcoming. I started a speech at a contest, and I know what I did wrong. I was about four times louder than I am now, and that's nowhere near full volume. And when I saw the judges jump, I think I blew it. And I think I did because nobody told me anything. So I was like, yeah, I think you know what you did wrong. Honest and sincere praise. Oh, that was great! And the look on your face says, that was terrible, but I'm going to say nice words make you feel, no. Positive reinforcement. Yes. You know, last time we talked about this, and you mentioned these phrases, and this time you've improved the, fr the phrasing of it, the delivery. What you it's better. And please, 
Don't be disingenuous. Don't be dishonest. Be honest with them. Help them to be better. That's what our job is. We're going to improve them. Not by, oh, they don't like yellow. But, you know, I wonder if that yellow wouldn't serve you better with a black suit rather than that pink one. And then, as we want to increase ourselves and build ourselves up and increase the skills, do we do the things we should do? Or do we make them feel bad in the process? And we have to tell them they made a mistake. The best evaluation is when you are gesturing with your hands, it didn't seem to be in sync with your words. We've all seen something like that. They go, you know, it happened just like I said. We've seen those before, haven't we? But we may need there's a way to tell them so that they feel better about it. Did you practice in front of a mirror? You can find a way to give personal examples. I know I shared some tonight. Encourage others who are listening to the evaluation to take some of that and apply what they heard. We heard our Toastmasters say that about our last speech. Yes, you can do something with that. I don't remember the exact wording. You can. By the way, these skills will help you in other areas of life too. As I mentioned, handle right, the marriage will grow, do it wrong. Friendships as well. And to that, I turn this back to a good friend, our Toastmaster, Lady Christina. Definitely skills we can use uh, in the workplace and other places. Uh, the next segment of our program is our learning moment. And we're going to learn about our New Pathways educational program and the Humor Mill website. Um, before we get into that, I just want to mention that we are running a little bit behind schedule. So, um, okay. <laughs> so I guess we'll kind of work that in there. While she's getting ready, though, I noticed we had a couple of guests come in. Late. Um, if you want to introduce yourself, tell us why Brooke brought you here while she's getting ready. Okay. Well, uh, I'm Rob Green. I've been here before, visited before, and uh, I want to be a incredibly great speaker like Ronald Reagan uh, and uh, dazzle the world with my speaking ability. Nice. Okay, great. We're well, in the right place. And welcome back. Thanks for coming back to visit us again. Would you like to tell us your name? Hi, everybody. My name is Yulia Hamad. I'm, I'm um, originally from Palestine, so I'm here to prove my English skills. Okay, great. Excellent. Very good. You're in the right place. So before you leave, if you guys want to grab, we have a guest packet in the back and more information about Toastmasters. Yes, Bob is holding it up, so just grab one in the back before you leave. Okay. So I'm going to just turn it over to Teresa, and she's going to tell us about Pathways, which is our new educational program. If you're kind of familiar with Toastmasters, um, this is a little different. It's more relevant to what's going on today with technology and things like that. So thank you. Really good. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's give Teresa a little round of applause, too. Yeah. 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 All right, that's about as big as it's going. This is a very informal training, but a lot of people are unaware that we have a website, and they're unaware of the features of the website. So we thought it would be a good idea to help guide people through it. Our Humor Mill website can be found at www.humormillclub.com. Toastmastersclubs, plural, dot org. Wish there was a way to shorten it, but that's not going to happen. And when you go to that website, this is where you come. This is beneficial for members 
It is also beneficial when you become officers. You know, one of the goals is your, to, to develop your leadership skills. So eventually, you should become an officer of some sort. On the home page, it, you will find any announcements. But what I wanted to take you to is there's this member login. When you become a member, you're going to get a specific username and password that will let you access the membership site. Once you're logged into the membership site, you then are going to have access to get to Pathways, which is our new educational program. Pathways is for interactive learning, and it's online. It's really a great program. There's another feature here. Tech, Techo training is my, I need to work on being a more engaging technology teacher. But for right now, I gotta watch my time. There's this meeting agendas. The reason this is important is because this is where you come to help sign up for your meeting roles. If you'll notice on the agenda, the printed agenda, you see roles. Evaluator, grammarian, postmaster, general evaluator. All of these roles need to be filled every week, every time we have a meeting. These roles kind of wean you in if you're a little nervous about public speaking and more nervous about writing a speech. Well, these roles don't require that. You can start off easy, like with the timer. The only thing the timer has to do is press start, press stop, and record the time. Let the people know, green card, you're still doing good. Yellow card, you're coming close to your time limit. Red card, you hit your time limit. And the most speaking that goes with that particular role is telling us that. So when you get to our website, you pick the date of the meeting. And since we are at the 9th, I'm going to jump to the 23rd. And right now, on the 23rd, we need a Toastmaster. We have our speaker number one. See the little sign up button? Once you're a member, you're on the site, you can click sign up, and then you can go for the next couple of weeks and pick out what roles you want to help serve with. You can also sign up for your speeches. Because if you've got a goal of hitting level one by the end of June, that means you've got to give so many speeches between now and then. And when you give your speech, um, let's see, let's see if speaker three is open. Oh, no, they're all taken. Okay, well, when, when you sign up for your speech, it says project and time. This is where you use the little drop down. If you're like me, I've completed more than three speeches in the workbook, the old system, I'm maintaining to get up to speech 10 then I'll be a competent communicator. If you do not have three speeches under your belt, it is best for you to go through Pathways. And if you're brand new, you're going to go through the Pathways program. The Pathways exercises are also there. John, if I change anything, come back up here and fix it for me, or at home. So it'll show you all of the different manuals that are out there. So Bob's manuals are on here because he's coming from advanced communicator manuals. And then as you keep going, they're in alphabetical order. This pathway's all the way at the bottom. The manuals are in alphabetical order. There we go, pathways. Pathways has 10 different paths. I mentioned in my speech, dynamic leadership is one of them. 
And if anybody wants to look at the different paths that are available, I've got an entire binder here with all the different options and projects you can look at after the meeting. So all the pathways, activities are in here. And now, how do we get to Pathways? Well, once you're here at the Humor Mill website, you go to Free Resources. And up here, it says Pathways. You click on Pathways, and now there's an assessment that you need to take. You have Learn More. The first thing I suggest is that you go to take the assessment. Oh, looky there, you've got a login. This is the login that you get when you, from Toastmasters.org. So what I recommend, so that people are not trying to remember usernames and passwords, you can make them the same. You can set your username and your password, or your password at least, to be the same. Uh, but Toastmasters.org will send you an email, and then you have to log in. And I wished I would have thought of doing that in advance. assessment I want you to go to take your assessment you then go through and your assessment has to be done in one one setting you can't come back later when you take the assessment you also have to um, screenshot the results because they don't save the results so you can't go back later and look at the three paths they recommend based upon your assessment these things will eventually be corrected, but right now, that's just the way it works. So, I went to the Pathways and Learn About Pathways, and this is where you can watch more videos. And guess what? If you are not a member, you can go to the Humor Mill website, you can go to Free Resources, you can go up to Pathways, and you can have access to learn about. But to take the actual assessment, you need to be a member. And that's it for now. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks, Master. Thanks so much for that. Thank so we're, we're getting ready for the new year now with all this uh, material we're learning. Um, our next segment is uh, improv and table topics, and this is the part where we work on uh, spontaneous speaking, which is really good for job interviews and business situations, things like that. And unfortunately, we're going to skip that tonight because we're a little tight on time. We're going to kind of keep this on the schedule. So we're going to um, come back in two weeks, and we'll have it in two weeks. But we're going to move on to our evaluation portion of our program right now. So what I'm going to do is turn that program over to our general evaluator, Bob Wilson, and he's going to take over the program. So help, please help me welcome Bob. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. The green is okay. Oh, <laughs> I'll do pink next time. Well, this is where we look at how does the meeting go? Did we do what we're supposed to do? Where can we improve and be better? Gee, does that sound familiar? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up our evaluator, who we should have one for each speech, but we kind of cheated when short of people. So we'll bring up our super evaluator, the other Bob. Super evaluator. And he's going to start with Teresa and then move on to what I said. Yes. All right, good evening, everyone. So first, I'm going to evaluate Teresa's speech. Let me start off with some of the things that could have been done differently. And 
I was kind of struggling to find something, but then after Bob's speech that said I should give some constructive feedback, I, I came up with some things. One is uh, what I really like about how Bob presents, he uses really good vocal variety, going really soft at times, but then getting louder, but not so loud that you scare the judges. Um, so, so that's something that I think I could work on too, because I think my volume level is kind of consistent in my speeches, so I think that's something that, that I could work on. Also too, I think I was busy <coughs> taking notes, and so I didn't hear like a thesis statement, and I'm kind of an engineer, so I like to know where are we going with this thing, and with your title, uh, A New Year, A New You, I, I wasn't exactly sure, but then it, it became clear as, as you went through it that it was about goal setting and how to achieve those goals, so I thought that was good. Uh, so what did I like about the presentation? Uh, a whole lot of things. I liked how you used visual aids. I think that really complemented your speech. And you didn't really fumble with the controls or anything. It went very smoothly and it supplemented the speech very well. I thought you had good hand gestures, great facial expressions, and uh, eye contact with the audience. I thought that was really good. And you just seemed very relaxed and not nervous during the whole thing, so it's a good job there. The next speech was for Bob Wilson. You can, we can, together we will be better. And instead of just going through each individual item, let me just kind of summarize. I really like how Bob used his vocal variety, as I mentioned before. I liked how he used the entire space and he also used his body language effectively when he was talking about uh, people feeling down. Uh, and, and then he did the corresponding body gesture. I thought that was really good. I think his vocal variety kept my attention, too. So if I was taking notes and he changed his his vocal variety increased the volume, all of a sudden I was, I was focused in, so I thought that was really good. And because Bob said I should really try to give some uh, suggestions for uh, next time, I, I was really struggling again with something to come up with. But the one thing that I could come up with is just the positioning of the podium. So when, when you went to check your notes, the people over there were kind of looking at your back. So I guess my recommendation would be is if you can have the podium here, then when you're checking your notes, you're still kind of facing uh, the audience at all times. Otherwise, I couldn't find anything else to suggest for improvement for next time. So that is my evaluation. And back to you. Uh, Thank you. Our next person up to tell us how wonderful we use the Queen's English or not, and those irritating, uh, 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 as you sit there, um, uh, sputtering, looking for what you're trying to say, we bring up John, our grammarian, and ha counter, as well as counting the ah, ha, ha, ha. such as incomplete sentences, incorrect grammar. I will note who uses the void or derivative of it correctly or incorrectly. Oh, W-O-D, word of the day. <laughs> uh, correctly or incorrectly. Okay. To our Toastmaster. It's, uh, I thought your presentations were well, uh, and I didn't hear any grammatical errors other than at one point where you were making a sentence and somehow the word da is really the 
was placed. But that was the only one. Uh, however, however, the uh, Oz really were touched. To which I have to say that when I listen to professionals speak, especially professors, uh, this evening I was, as I was coming in, I was listening to a professor from the Wharton School of Business on a half hour show and the word ah came up at least a hundred times. So, do not feel bad. Do not feel bad. <laughs> because the, a great professor from Wharton does the ahs and the oohs. <laughs> Now, Teresa, I thought your grammar and your speech was well. I didn't see any inconsistencies in grammar. The only thing I noticed was pauses in your presentation. And at first I thought it was a, there were pauses for emphasis, but then I heard you speak quite fluidly without the pauses. So um, just my take on it, I was just a little bit confused as to whether you were pausing deliberately or unconsciously. And the use of the word fastidious came up twice. So I have to uh, plug you for that. And Bob, there's not much really else to say other than I think I gave you six stars. I didn't see, I didn't see anything grammatically incorrect, as you said. Uh, and uh, you definitely employed the word fastidious in your presentation twice. It was good, and we, I think we've come to expect you to be the benchmark for what we all are trying, trying to achieve. Thank you. Well, as indicated before, one can only go so far before trying to bring others up as well. And well, I got the heart of a teacher. Now, the teacher is going to talk about how we can make the meeting a little bit better. Some of these look like little nitpicky things, but we need to know these things because the thing that can separate knock you out of a speech contest could be one word. They have to be that big at times. Should we say the rest of my talk in the middle of the presentation? I don't know. Your slide had the incorrect use, the incorrect form of the word attain, because when you put attain being one of these unique irregular verbs, the S makes it a singular, but the lack of S makes it a plural. They attain, he attains. Toastmaster of the day with them have some excellent good segues. There's a nice word to look up. Transitions. Should we have had the education series after the gender evaluation? I'm not going to harp on the time. A lunchtime meeting, we'll start on time because they have to get back to work. The evening meeting, well, anybody here got small kids need bedtime? No. Well, we can fix that as we get there. stands behind a lectern, or refers to it, one stands on a podium. It's elevated. Please, as Toastmasters, we got to get it right. John, a little louder, please. And, Madam President, inaudible pauses are preferred over audible pauses. Overall, we're getting better. we got a ways to go. And to that, we bring it back to our Toastmaster for the final little bit and what ends up follows. Ooh, we did 
forget one important thing. Sorry about that, Kyle. I forgot about you. Timer. It is to, um, my role of time is to monitor time during prepared speeches and table topics and evaluations. So, um, opening remarks from Teresa, um, two to three minutes. The actual time was two minutes and 22 seconds. The meeting instruction by Crystal was time target rank was three minutes to four minutes. The actual time, four minutes and five seconds. Speaker one, Teresa McCoy, target time, five to seven minutes. Actual time, seven minutes and 19 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, speaker two, Bob Wilson. Target time, 10 to 15 minutes. Actual time was 13 minutes and 51 seconds, so very good. Uh, speaker three, learning moments, Teresa McCoy. Target time was five to seven minutes. Actual time was nine minutes and 30 seconds. Um, we did not have the improv tonight, so we'll go to speaker evaluation one. Uh, target time was two to three minutes. Actual time was one minute and 45 seconds. Speech evaluator number two, um, target time minute, two to three minutes. Tar actual time was one minute and 35 seconds. Um, no speech evaluation for third speech. Um, general evaluator, one to two minutes. Actual time, one minute and 53 seconds. And the grammarian high counter, John, uh, target time was one minute to two minutes. Actual time was three minutes and 45, 44 seconds. And now, we, now we bring it back to the lady in green, the Toastmaster today. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, we're so glad you could be here with us to kind of get started on the new year, learning things about Toastmasters, and hopefully you can apply them to work. I just also encourage you all to go out and create all those amazing moments in life for 2018. And now I'm going to bring up our president, Teresa McCoy, to close this out. Leadership Institute, they are free. They're free sessions. Um, it's an educational program that covers all the different roles and responsibilities of the Toastmaster Club and the different officers. You do not need to be an officer to attend, and it is very beneficial to attend without being an officer. It helps you understand a little bit more about the roles. Also, the topics change. So officers, we go every six months. And if you serve as an officer, not in the same role, but in different roles, and you continue to go, the information is different each time. So it's not like you're going and all of a sudden you could repeat and give you know, the, the speeches or the workshops that they present. So I recommend that you go. It's on our calendar on the Humor Mill website. You can see the different offerings. The I think it's the 18th of January. Yes. The 18th of January. It's a Thursday. It's over at the Navy Federal Credit Union, not too far from here. So that's the one that's closest to here. I do encourage everybody. And if you are an officer and you have not already been, make sure to register. Outside of that, two weeks we have another meeting, and guests feel free to ask us questions. There are refreshments at the end, 